Welcome to the final part of this module. Let us highlight the main modification in the integument of birds. The skin of bird has many modifications if compared with the mammals. It is typically very thin and some modifications can be seen at the skin glands, accessory structures, presence of patagium, and the interdigital web. More importantly, one unique feature that distinguishes bird from other animals is the presence of feathers. Unlike mammals, sweat glands are absent in birds. Interestingly, sebaceous glands are found only in three locations, and they are at the uropegial gland, the external acoustic meatus gland, and the cloacal gland. One of the most important among the three is the uropegial gland. It is also known as the prin gland or the oil gland. It is present in all chicken and water birds and is composed of two lobes, each with an excretory duct that opens on the unpaired uropedial papilla. The oily holocrine glandular secretion covers the feather in a fatty film. This is very important in the preening behavior of waterfowl to waterproof their feathers. We can also notice some skin modifications in the head region of birds. The most obvious is the comb. This is the fleshy growth or crest on the top of the head. The wattle, on the other hand, is the fleshy growth that hangs down under their chin. Their earlobe is composed of fleshy bits that stick out on the side of the head. In other poultry species like turkey, the snood is very prominent. This is a fleshy appendage that extends over the beak. The head is also covered with a structure called caruncles. These are fleshy protuberances found on the head, neck, and throat with larger structures particularly at the bottom of the throat. The network of sinusoidal capillaries in the superficial layer of the dermis of comb, wattle, snood, and caruncles are responsible for the red coloration of these structures. Another interesting structure in birds is the patagium. The patagia are membranous folds of skin that span the flexor surfaces of the joint of the wings. At the shoulder, the folds are present on both the extensor and flexor surfaces of the joint. Elastic fibers embedded within the patagia permit the wings to be rested against the body without muscular effort. The wing has four patagia. The propatagium is the largest skin fold of the wing and it fills the angle formed by the partially flexed elbow. The postpatagium is located at the caudal angle of the carpus. The metapatagium is located at the caudal junction of the thorax and the wing, while the allular patagium is located between the allula and the carpometacarpus. In some birds, in particular the waterfowls like ducks, Interdigital webs are well developed. The structure is located at the spaces between the second, third, and fourth toes of waterfowl that facilitates swimming as shown here. The epidermis is thicker in featherless regions to accommodate the mechanical forces to which these areas are subjected. Epidermal specializations occurring in these regions include the rampotheca, which is the horny sheet that forms the epidermal covering of the beak. The sear, which is the soft, variably colored region of the skin present on the upper beak. The podotheca, which is the scaly covering present on the foot of the birds. The pads, the claws, and the spur, which is well developed in males. The presence of feathers is the hallmark of class aves. Like the hairs of mammals, feathers are keratinous in nature and grow from an epidermal follicle that encircles a dermal core. There are two main types of feathers seen in poultry. Contour feathers comprise the flight feathers and those that cover the body, while the down feathers are fluffy and soft. They are present under the exterior feathers. Now let us study the basic feather structures. 
The feather has a shaft and it is composed of the calamus and rachis. The calamus or quill is the hollow portion of the shaft and it attaches the feather to the bird's skin or bone. On the other hand, the rachis is the rigid portion of the shaft that holds the veins. The distal umbilicus is the small opening which marks the boundary between the calamus and the rachis, while the proximal umbilicus is the opening at the proximal end of the calamus. The vein or the vexillum is the plume part of the feather that grows from the central shaft, while the barb grows from the rachis. Each barb is a feather within a feather with the little shaft and the little barbs of its own called barbules. When viewed as a whole, the barbs are the vein. Barbules are the mini barbs that grow from the central shaft of each barb. There are also different types of feather present in the birds. Contour feather gives shape and color to the bird. They are found everywhere except in the beak, legs, and feet. It is composed of the coverts, flight, and the tail feathers. The covert feathers are the most numerous feathers covering most of the surface of the body. Their size, shape, and color vary greatly depending on the location and function. The rectrices are the feathers of the tail. Take a look that they have a symmetrical vexillae as shown here. In contrast with the flight feathers or also known as the remiges, they have a slightly curved shaft and asymmetrical vexillae. They are located on the antebrachium called the secondary remiges, in the manus as the primary remiges, and at the alula as alular remiges. The semi-plume feather is a cross between the down and the contour feathers. Unlike the down, they do have a well-developed and formed shaft. However, they do not have a well-developed barbicels which make them soft. They are found underneath contour feathers and are used for insulation. The filoplume feathers are incredibly small. They have a tuft of barbs at the end of the shaft. They are attached to the nerve endings and send messages to the brain that give information about the placement of feathers for flight, insulation, and preening. Bristle feathers are very stiff with only few barbs found at the base. They are found around the mouth of the insect-eating birds where they act as a funnel. They can also be found around the eyes where they work like eyelashes. Down feathers have little or no shaft. They are soft and fluffy. Down feathers help insulate birds by trapping air. In definitive adult down feathers, they are usually numerous in water birds. And that ends our discussion on the integument present in birds and the end of our module on common integuments.